Hi everyone, welcome to Game Dev London. I'm your brand new host, Matt Ball, and today I'm with Danny Martin, developer of The Puppeteer. Uh, we're going to be talking about a wide range of topics, including showcasing your game at industry events and seeing the game through to launch. Uh, Danny, would you care to introduce yourself, give people a bit of an idea of who you are, what you do? Sure thing. Yes, I'm Danny, an indie game developer in my spare time. Um, I released my first game, The Puppeteer, in October last year. It was a two-year process, and yeah, yeah, it was a, just a great experience to kind of see the whole process of releasing a game. Yeah, sweet. All right, so um, obviously with your, with your game, you've, um, you know, you, you've been to GDLX uh, f to, to showcase it, right? Um, how was that experience for you? I'd say, I'd say it was a pretty amazing experience. It was my very first showcase. I kind of mm -hmm. only found out about it just through joining the GDL Discord. And I kind of, at that point, I had like a pretty big demo and I was like, I'd been working this game for perhaps a year, a year and a half at that point. And I was like, oh, you know, it'd be cool to get some eyes on it and, and kind of see what people, what like the rest of the world thinks of it really. Uh, and GDL XC, yeah, turned out to be a great event for that. Um, yeah. It was like, very accessibly priced and with all the um, coming with all the uh, tools and like that they came with like screens and everything that we needed that they provided all that which was great and um, yeah the actual day itself was great got to see loads of other developers and like people from members of the public etc just play it and uh, tear it apart and and um, like have a good time of it overall so yeah no it was, it was a lot of fun yeah yeah no it's always cool seeing uh, seeing other people play your game for the first time um, especially if it's your first time showcasing the game, that initial, uh, you get quite nervous. <laughs> if you're running up to it, you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, these people that I've never spoken to are going to be, uh, you know, going to be playing my game um, and they may absolutely hate it or they may absolutely love it. Um, so it's quite a daunting, daunting experience. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think, as you say, like uh, the general public and stuff, seeing that perception is really really fascinating to me. Um, I think it's always interesting to see the way they play games as opposed to like developers because um, we, you know, f for context, we've showcased at several events ourselves and um, the audiences for that, for those events have kind of varied from event to event. Um, and usually like for, for us, we usually aim for like the general public and stuff. Um, so we were kind of used to the, the public perception of the game. Um, and then it was, you know, when we were showcasing to a developer audience, it was a really different, uh, different take on it. Um, it was sort of like, you know, I guess they were very much, um, interested in how it was made as opposed to like, you know, um, yeah, the fun of it. Yeah, so it's really it's quite interesting that that's you know that that's something that that you see from event to event, and I think that's what GDLX captured perfectly as well for me uh, was that it was a mixture of both, right? So you have got both both ends of the stick, I suppose, um, which also was quite daunting as well because <laughs> you know you're talking to someone you don't know if they're a developer or a general public, <laughs> um, but it is yeah. still good fun. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely agree. I think for me, it was almost the other way around. Like I had my, so GDLX was my first expo and it was very developer focused. And I remember after mm -hmm. that, then having like Medway Games Festival where it was extremely public focused. Uh, also, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was like a GDL outing where we all went as a little group. But yeah, that was like, yeah, completely different to get like, I guess the actual target age range of like, you know, like teenagers and like younger kids and families all playing the game and being like, oh, wow, like, uh, you know, like they, they deal with it in a completely different way. They, they perhaps not hounding me as much about how the UI could be better, but they're, <laughs> but they're like, you know, like really getting into it and like, you know, wanting to take on the challenges, etc. Yeah. And, and breaking your game more than, more than the developers would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely a huge note to raise is like, if you've got a game and it's not been tested that much, or you're worried like, oh, how can I test this game? Do I need to like, get like testers in like what's the best way do i just need to sit down for ages honestly taking it to an expo is one of the best things you can do because 100%. you'll get over 100 people play your game and believe me they will break it in so many different ways that you didn't expect and it, yeah, it's it's the perfect way to test the game really yeah 
Yeah, no, absolutely. They they definitely stress test it to the <laughs> to the max. Yeah. Yeah, test your uh, test hardware as well. Test everything. <laughs> Yeah, the, the amount of crashes you get when you're like, how on earth did it even crash? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I think uh, another thing that I really like about showcasing is um, talking to the other exhibitors that are around. I always find it really fascinating to see, you know, why they're working on what they're working on and stuff. And you sort of feel like a very tight knit community. I don't know if you felt that like talking to the, you know, the other exhibitors at either Medway or GDLX where it was very much like we were all in it together and i think that was really like a, a quite a nice way of kind of encapsulating the industry as a whole um you know especially for indies that's something that's quite common is we kind of like are quite grouped together and it is like this massive i guess family yeah. without being too cliche um yeah absolutely i mean that's pretty sure where we first met as gdlx mm. and um and yeah, I mean, in terms of the day, it's like the day will be so tiring. You'll be talking nonstop. And I felt like it was only at the end when things was dying down and like, you know, like you were just wrapping up and then you, I'd look around and be like, oh, wait, there's all these other indie developers here. Let's go and have a chat. Let's go and play some games. And I think it was nice. Actually, GDLX had a kind of after party kind of vibe where yeah. once everyone had left, then it was time for the indies to go and play the other indie games. And honestly, that was like, yeah, like a great moment to then walk around all the stores and see like, all the like bizarre and amazing games that other people had so yeah 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 no definitely um and obviously like you know with with your game um just just for people to be aware of what you're working on um yeah or what you were working on rather what um what do you do in the game what's the what's the goal so the puppeteers it's it's like a kind of very retro styled game kind of a lot like old school Legend of Zelda or like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. It's like 2D top down and you're just like running through a world trying to take down guys. And I think one of the prevailing themes is like the difficulty. Um, if I was to use one of the Steam tags, probably Souls-like would be like up there as one of them. Um, it's like a very, it's a very challenging game. And most of the, the um, gameplay, for example, like the potions, crafting, etc., is all there to help you handle the difficulty and, and yeah, part of that in terms of like showcasing it, obviously one of the big like thoughts was like, this game is, this game is hard. Um, how do I make it so that, you know, people don't hate it when you only give them like two minutes to play the game? Uh, yeah, that was definitely mm -hmm. one of the challenges. But, but yeah, like, so yeah, that's, that's the puppeteer. It's, it's a, it's a tough kind of old school Legend of Zelda, like, yeah, like pushing your button mashing skills to the test. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's, that's pretty fun. Um, with the so so you say that the potions like you know control the difficulty of the game um so when you were when you were coming up with with the idea for for the game like what was the but like what was the your i feel like there's a eureka moment in game development for for any game where you're trying to design it you're trying to think of something that will make it more unique or a little bit more exciting um what was the reason for going towards the potions was that something that you already had in mind or was it just something that came up yeah very, very much so there's like a so yeah. i liked the idea of setting like in uh like similar to i guess like a dark souls game like setting the bar really high like the difficulty was very high and what i wanted to do with the potions mechanism is basically you have seven i guess attributes that you can like when you craft a potion you can pick to either increase your strength or your speed or like how stealthy you are etc and the idea was that you would you would kind of collect like berries which would give you each of these like possibilities like throughout the levels and things and then it's up to the player to kind of really decide how they want to spec and like i wanted to give the i guess the player the freedom to then be like oh i want to make like a really fast potion like i'm just going to max out speed or like i want to make like a really balanced potion or right. i want to do a lot and kind of like leave it up to the player to interpret how they want to deal with the challenge basically um yeah and that's what drew me to the potions is just really it was like a really flexible mechanic for yeah just letting people people choose how they wanted to play the game and then it was like a nice other there was a, one of the potions ability was just to make your potion last longer so you're also giving people the chance to, to like manage but like amongst themselves like do they if they really like a potion do they want to make it really long so they have it for longer you know like the is that experiment there's a big like weight on experimentation then to to yeah. how you play the game but also from a technical point of view, there's less to do because you're 
kind of make it. You're giving the power to the players, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was yeah. kind of that was at the balance. Obviously, <laughs> my first game, I don't want to go and make like a Skyrim level uh, <laughs> of, of tools and everything. I thought that would be why like... not? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah, I'd definitely be uh, in development for the next five years. I'm sure. But yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess with with that then, like with the when you were showcasing your game, um, I bet that was quite intriguing to see how you know how people were putting like potions together and stuff and was there like a time where you know people were I, i've just got this image in my mind where people were trying to make like the the craziest potion in order to make the game a lot easier for themselves is that something that like was a common occurrence or were people like just trying out new things was there like a what I'm trying to say is, was there a potion that was, I guess, prevalent <laughs> as such? So, yeah, that's a it's a great question because I had my personal thought or preference on what I thought was the best potion, which was like mm. a really fast, high hitting potion where you were just like, you're able to like power through a level. But I watched so many people just take on like a whole new take on things. Like we had guy guys who would come in and just like stick with stealth and avoid every enemy and be like, yeah, that was easy. That was how I wanted to do it. I was like, oh, I'd never thought of doing that really. And then there's mm -hmm. like people who just go for like really mixed hybrid potions that just have like one of everything. And I was like, yeah, it was, it was amazing to deceive people. And obviously like at a showcase for a lot of people, it was just kind of random potluck as well. Cause like it's the first time playing the game. Um, yeah. You know, you're, you, you, you just got to pick, like no one's going to read too much into like what does what. And then that was kind of fun to just see like what arbitrary, like on a first run, like what potions are fun, what is a bit less fun. Like, it definitely made me think about making some of the potions more interesting because I like learned like if people pick a certain combo, they're a bit like, oh, that, that didn't do it very much. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. yeah, learning a lot about that. It also makes me definitely think that in terms of like the parts of the game that get hit the most, the UI is definitely one of the biggest things that will get like, you will get grilled when people play it for the first time because I think my potions menu especially at GDLX was like my first iteration of it. And a lot of people were like, what you think is like, oh, you know, like that's a pretty clear, clear UI. People will like navigate around it. People are like, oh no, what does this button do? Um, is that a button? Is that, you know, like, is that what, like, where's the text, everything? It was amazing for like ironing out all those details that you perhaps when you're the only one who views your game, you just can't figure out for yourself. And yeah. I'm never worried that, you know, like, oh, like I need to keep refining my UI. Honestly, take it to an expo and you'll get, that feedback back and it's always like a really positive experience yeah yeah and i guess i guess it goes to show that like you know because we mentioned that when you're showcasing it's quite a good way of play testing um but it's also a really good way of uh getting a feel for the ux of your game um i think a lot of people you know as you said they they play differently they look at things differently than what you would do or what the what the team would do um and i think ux is often uh, it's often overlooked for new indie games, uh, for people that are just starting out. I think people kind of underestimate how important it is for people to be able to, you know, click through as little amount of screens as possible, basically. Um, and I think it really, really emphasizes for me that the user experience is probably number one before the actual gameplay of everything. Um, mm. Just because if people aren't having a good experience, <laughs> then like even from the get go, then it kind of, you know, puts a really bad, bad look on the rest of, yeah. of the game, I think. Um, it, it's it's one of those things that you, you don't have to like make it look super glitzy or, or go crazy on, but it can't be bad. It has to be like, at least like really clear, clean, and people can get it. Like you don't have to, I, I feel like, especially for indies, you know, like, you don't have to worry about it being like insanely yeah like with like loads of graphics and everything but it is about making it like clear like that has to be right yeah yeah and making then... it as easy for people especially you know a showcase they haven't played the game before mm -hmm. they probably have skipped past the tutorial if there is one and they don't know what they're doing so they, they don't want to read a wall of text that was another thing. Yeah. Uh, that was actually yeah, another thing I realized, which I took out, was the intro dialogue to my game for future expos. Right. Obviously, you make a game and like I'd made the start and I'd made a little story and I was like, oh, this is this is cool, you know. Like, obviously, you'd want to read that. And in reality, obviously, you would. But in an expo context, 
that that text is 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 not worth it. It's yeah. it's, it's, like it's a, basically it's practically yeah. irrelevant. They'll skip past it's, it. But it's like the gameplay is really in like two or three minutes. That's the main thing that people want to see. And I just realized I just skipped the intro and it would start straight with level one because I was like, yeah, just, that's really what. Otherwise, people people do get put off by walls of text. It's like yeah. Expo it is a when you're looking at so many games, it's it's quite common that. that yeah. Happens. Yeah, I think I think it does depend on the game, um, like the genre of game. So I've found that when people are playing a certain genre, um, or they see someone playing a certain genre, and that's what draws them in, right? You, you see someone else playing the game, that's what draws you to play the game yourself. Um, and for something like... If the gameplay is very action-y or very like high-octane, then when they sit down and play and it's different to that, then I think that's the, that's the issue with it. It's less so people not liking the wall of text, it's more so their expectation is different to what the outcome was. Um, I guess that, you know, that comes down to game development, uh, you know, as a whole anyway. It's like when you go, go to release the game, it's very important that, you know, when a, when a person is playing that game, it reflects what, what, what they've been shown and stuff. But I think when someone's sat down and they've bought a game and they're playing it, people either don't mind the intro at all, or it's the worst thing <laughs> they've ever experienced if you if you don't nail it on the head so intros are a really a really interesting one that you know i think i think it's like it's not really spoken about a lot but i think a lot of indies fall into the pitfall of making like making an intro like the this story based intro and expecting people to like be like oh yeah i really love it because high chance unless your game was made by like a narrative guy Hmm. High chance that it's gonna be <laughs> a real like you know a real headache for people to to play um and I think yeah it, it's quite interesting you know the when talking about narratives um like story based experiences whilst at a showcasing event um and I think yeah i I don't know I think uh, a lot of people kind of it just depends on the genre like their expectation of of what they see right. Yeah, obviously there's experts like I think Adventure X right is is kind of dedicated mm. towards like more story based yeah. games, which I think is good that it has its own expo in a way because I think it is hard to compete with attention. I think otherwise, um, yeah, or or like or, I mean obviously like a good story will will get most people there. So <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, I mean I guess it, it it's about establishing that audience right the the correct audience for your game like right from the get-go um and i think if you don't know your audience then you're kind of making the game for the genre rather than for the people if that makes sense mm -hmm. um yeah i know that's what we you know we we started doing initially we were very much making the making a game that fell under the normal norms of the genre you're making the game for but obviously that's very rarely the case anyway is that it's going to be in the norm uh, especially for indies you know you have to kind of you know go a bit crazy <laughs> uh, put your own spin on the genres so um i think showcasing is really really amazing for finding out who your audience is uh, something that yeah did you did you yeah. find that there was big changes like to your to your audience or like unexpected audiences that you didn't expect yes yeah, so I mean, I guess we we showcased our game about uh, it was about four or five months into development, um, and we showcased it at Insomnia, uh, Insomnia sixty eight, I think it was. So like four Insomnias ago, um, and yeah, we we showcased it there, and we were you know we were talking to everyone, and we were we were finding that people we expected to play the game were not playing the game <laughs> uh it was it was mostly it was mostly families and stuff and it actually ended up being positive anyway yeah. um but it could have very easily gone the opposite direction where we very much didn't know who our audience was yet um mm -hmm. the game was i think we did the pr 
we did the showcase in order to see if the prototype was worth continuing. That was yeah. my thought process. Um, and, you know, it, obviously, as you can tell, it was worth doing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like the, you know, we found that with certain people, um, they are much more likely to play our game when they're with somebody else because it's a co-op game, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and initially, our plan was to, well, we still want it now. We still want it like it now, but basically, initially, we wanted to make sure that everyone could play the game regardless. Uh, and there's there's a quote made by oh, I can't remember who it was, but. <laughs> that's not great but uh, there's there's a quote made by somebody um and they basically say that making a game for everyone is like making a game for for no one basically because you're never going to get a game that's made for everyone if that makes sense yeah, people are too diverse i think overall it it, it would yeah. be a, it'd be hard to yeah balance everything for sure yeah yeah um but yeah i feel like because our game, we, we very much wanted it to be made for a, like a massive audience, like as many, like a very general audience. But if you don't target a specific one, mm. then you're not going to get anywhere. Um, I think, you know, it comes, it comes down to just figuring out what your game is and the audience really shapes that. Yeah. Did, did you find then as you were showcasing a co-op game, like, were the kind of people who sat down typically than people who already knew each other? Or did you find that you were also able to get like strangers to just sit down, like four people who'd like not met each other and mm. be like, how is this going to work? Like with this, you know, like, were people keen for that in general? Or... Yeah, people were pretty open to, uh, to trying out that sort of stuff. Um, I think it was, it was a bit harder initially because the game didn't have its artistic flair that it does now. Um, so getting people to sit down anyway was quite tough but mm. we were basically we were heavily relying on people at the event talking to other people at the event in order to get more people in um and i think that is actually the beauty of making a co-op game uh when you're showcasing it's very easily for that word or very easy for that word of mouth to like spiral basically because you're the ones everyone is there. as well you've got <laughs> you've got like a little crowd around <laughs> your, your desk so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think, I, mean, I guess it does come down to when there's, when there's a game that you can play with multiple people, I've found that the crowds are a lot bigger just because the people that are waiting, there's like, <laughs> like three groups of four people and it looks like so many people, but in actual fact, it's like three groups. Um, and and I think that's really good. I think it's... Huh? people generate people so yeah 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 exactly yeah and you you just end up talking to everyone about the game or over and over and over again <laughs> um but yeah i mean i guess that that that's also another question i had for you was when you're um when you were showcasing the amount of talking that you do did there get a point where you were <laughs> where you were like oh my gosh i've pitched this game about 40 times today you know I'm, I'm kind of i'm kind of feeling a bit a bit done with pitching it w was that something that that came up for you yeah you get very used to saying that the same lines over and over um which i think is obviously expected because everyone wants to yeah of course wants to hear that fresh take um yeah definitely i think uh it also depends a bit on the audience as well i think so yeah so i did medway which was mainly aimed at like families and kids and that was a very different experience because the yeah the game developers they want to hear like the download like what's the genre is going to be what's everything going to be but they won't the kids won't say anything they'll come sit down play the game and just hammer it out for like five minutes and then get up and leave which is like yeah a great, it could be a different experience it's just that like, you know they they want to just see the gameplay um so yeah it kind of varies from expo to expo like how much talking you need to do but it's definitely worth like nailing like a couple of lines to kind of sum up the game just don't want to spoil too much you kind of want to just let someone sit down and kind of explore it but yeah give, enough to like give them a bit of context um yeah. yeah yeah no i think i think kids uh when they're when they're playing games it's, it's a it's a really different experience because 
they are not going to ask you any questions, as you say. Uh, they sit down, pick their nose, then they get on your computer, <laughs> and that is basically it. Um, they're also using yeah, that. I think it's I found <laughs> they're, they're true, able to, true. They were they were like getting much further through the game, and it made me realize that actually a lot about my target audience. Um, mm. I realized that actually I was perhaps making a game that I should pitch to like a much younger audience than I perhaps initially thought, because I kind of in my yeah. head for reference I was kind of looking at the like standard Dark Souls audience or like Hollow Knight, like I guess games that are quite like known known to be like difficult and like typically talked about by like perhaps older people, but then actually you know this game was like kind of like was actually much better received i think by like teenagers and like younger people who were like kind of willing to like die like 50 times in a row and just like guess i'm like see how it see like that progression that way but i think other people would like sit yeah. down and be like it's too hard i'm i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna move on or like or like make it easier like yeah it was, it was very interesting to see that dynamic um yeah i think uh i think kids are really really good like showcase play testers because it depends on their age um but if they're able to like vocalize their thoughts but not to the point where they can lie <laughs> um you know that there's because i think with adults right we we have a we have a tendency if if someone asks us oh what did you think of the game we'll just say oh yeah i quite liked it we're not gonna say, "Oh, that was awful," you know. But, but kids, they will. Uh, <laughs> they'll they'll quite, let you know. They'll let you know. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're quite open. Yeah, they're, they're ready to, uh, to tear down your heart. They'll just be like, "Yeah, that was, that was awful," or whatever. You're like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> like, this, this power up was great. This one I hated. I don't want to touch this one again. And it's like great to have that. Like, yep, yeah, okay, that's good feedback. I can use that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, I suppose. Um, that goes quite nicely into, you know, when when you are showcasing and you were getting this feedback, is there a process that you follow in order to keep that feedback somewhere? Like, do you store it anywhere? Do you keep a record of it, or do you just put it in your head? Uh, I typically tend to jot it down either in like a notepad or my on like a phone like file or something. Just just have it mm. somewhere. Like honestly, in like just short. Like if someone gives a point, it's definitely worth the effort to just like make a note that literally just like shorthand something so that when like in the evening or like a few days down the line i'll like typically write everything up again into like tickets that i actually want to want to progress like uh and like yeah features that i want to adapt but yeah definitely worth making a note because you probably won't remember it all off the top of your heads if you're talking to like 100 people in a day chances are like some pretty good advice might like you might forget it if you're if you're just keeping your head so i definitely recommend yeah having just like some easy access place to like write stuff down it's good yeah um, i find also that works better slightly than sometimes you can have like passive feedback where like say you just have like a a like a notebook and pen next to your game and you just hope that people will write down their feet like saying like please leave feedback i feel like that can work to an extent but in reality like people aren't really probably going to do that unless they're like they either they either won't see it or like you know it, it's like a bit of effort Whereas if you can just catch them and be like, oh, you know, like, what do you think? Or like, hear that live remark, like, that's much easier to, for you to like, keep an, keep a, keep an account of, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, I think, um, like, because we've, we've picked up some, some things when, when showcasing and, um, like, kind of the best methods, especially when it's really busy, it's quite hard to, uh, to write down every single thing that someone says. Um, nice. Yeah, I think, I think, like, we've, we've found that it, sometimes it's just impossible right um and we've kind of come up with as many ways <clears throat> as possible to get the people themselves to like write it down anonymously um so whether that's through like a like a qr code they scan for a like a google form or whatever uh just saying how did you like it blah blah, blah filling out surveys basically um because we found that it turns out to be very helpful like quality qualitative and yeah. Yeah. positive data um whereas you know when you're taking on that normal information um you're only getting that like that pure just just words right um i think people are actually much more likely um you know when they're when they're filling out a survey one if it's anonymous they can be as blatant as possible and they won't feel bad right um and two the 
like the just being able to press like okay how much did you like the game four out of five you know what what could we do to improve it and then they put some words down um and it's it's quite a nice a nice way of getting getting that feedback on um quite quickly as well uh and those people that are giving us that feedback they you know it makes it very easy for us to kind of well basically we can just see okay well these people genuinely liked the game anyway enough to fill out a survey and that's to me, that's a pretty big indicator that they're just like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So even if they put in like, you know, three out of five that they liked the game, at least I know that they filled out the survey, so they were interested enough to actually actually like the game. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think yeah. it's really interesting. For but my, for my final round of like test for like testing, yeah, I found that the Google form was the best way. Just yeah, as you said, to yeah. get that quantitative data. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's really interesting. And I think, you know, when it comes to when it comes to playtesting in general, it's very difficult to, you know, especially if you if you start up like a a group of people that are regularly playing your game to check it out and stuff, you're gonna find that one they get basically the same opinion as you eventually, where they're like, oh, this is awesome. Um, and then there's basically no feedback for them to give, um, unless unless they're like playtesting for like bugs and stuff. Um, that's obviously a different. There's there's different types of of tests and and, and things like that. Um, and I think that's you know it's quite interesting that you know there's there are all these different options for for playtesting. It's not just uh, you know playing the game, saying what you think. It's also playing the game. Saying how you fix, like what this bug is, fixing that bug, um, and you know when you were showcasing your game, uh, when it came to general bugs and stuff, uh, were there any? Because I think this is always a fun question to ask. Uh, were there any like massive bugs when you were at the event, or had you play tested efficiently beforehand? I think. Most, I luckily, I don't think I ever had anyone crash crash the game where it's just like okay. broken irreparably. But I had a lot of like funny UI ones. People were able to get like menus to appear while they were walking around and they would press on like what I thought would like give the potions menu, it would give a completely different menu. And I was like, something has gone so wrong in the code. Like, how are they doing this? I think that's the typical one. Um, yeah, people popping up menus all the time. Uh, Someone managed, I think the f weirdest one I've ever seen is like someone used a power up where you become like a big electric ball. And then when it ran out, like my character holds a sword for pretty much the entire game. He managed to lose the sword mm. when the power up finished, the sword went and my guy was no longer able to attack. And I was like, I, to my, to the life of me, I don't know what you've done here. Um, you're like, <laughs> just, just lost the sword. So yeah, that, that was with the randomest one where I really was just like, yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, <laughs> I hope that never happens again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bugs, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bugs are uh, bugs aren't great initially. They're great when you uh, like after the event. You're like, oh, okay, we can now fix it. <laughs> There's no like isolation. I, I imagine with a co-op mm -hmm. game, you must. I said, what about you? Like, I imagine with a co-op game, you must have like the potential for bugs is like even even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, <laughs> yeah. There's. Uh... There's there's plenty in there at the moment. Even 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 now, there's still bugs to be to be sorted. But yeah, we we found the biggest thing has been. Um, I mean, obviously, there's the general like disconnection stuff, which is, oh, that that's like the worst worst thing to happen. And crashes or disconnects, those mm -hmm. are like our worst nightmare. When those happen at the events. <laughs> I whip out the laptop and I'm working to fix that bug to put it in, into production. Nice. Um, but other than that, we found that actually, because of the nature of the game, people are much more accepting of bugs. Um, like, if there's something that, as long as it's not like stopping them from doing something or whatever, they're usually pretty open to, well, they're not open to bugs, but <laughs> they're like, more accepting of them being there um, and we've <clears throat> you know we found like I don't know when you when you get revived you are spawned 
in this kind of, <coughs> excuse me, uh, in this like elevator basically uh, that you then come out of. And uh, we had this bug where you'd respawn and the doors for the elevator wouldn't open. So you'd just be, st <laughs> you'd just be stuck in there. Um, there would just be like, I don't know, about 150 zombies like surrounding the surrounding the elevator and they can't get in. Um, and thankfully, the people that were playing were just absolutely laughing their heads off. Uh, they just found it hilarious. So, you know, there are definitely some some good times for bugs to happen. Um, bugs aren't always mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even if even if I don't I don't like them. For the best of times they can something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it, it shows, like, you know, it, it gave us a really good idea uh, for how our audience is as well. Um, and it's meant that when there are bugs that we come across, like, obviously we want to try and fix every bug, but if there is a bug that's not, like, super vital, we know that hopefully our audience will be pretty accepting of it um, because eventually we'll fix it anyway. But they tend to be a little bit more lenient on it. Um, and I think it comes down to the art style and the general casual feel of the game. Uh, I think if we were going for like a really gritty, like, you know, like a Souls life or something, and that and that sort of thing happened, people are much more serious gamers yeah, for that. Like, they, yeah, like, there's a tone that you're trying to set, which like a bug doesn't fit into. But as you say, like, with a game that's meant to be like a, a fun party game, like, it's almost, as long as it's, yeah, not, not game breaking, it's like, oh, you know, it's meant to be like that kind of game anyway. It's very true. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Um, okay, so, I mean, we're running running up to the end of the the, the show today, but um, what would you, what sort of advice would you give to somebody that's wanting, you know, they, they've just started their game and they're wanting to, you know, they're wanting to showcase eventually. What would be your your advice for someone wanting to do something like that? In terms of what to prepare, I'd say, like, you want to at least, like, one or two levels, like, a good portion of your game, like, pretty well, mm -hmm. pretty, like, well debugged, <clears throat> but, like, not extremely so. And, yeah, I think conscious of, like, the intro perhaps not being, I mean, the intro seems like the obvious part of the game to showcase, but, like, if there is, like, a lot of exposition or something, maybe, yeah, like, you don't always need strictly, like, to keep all of that in, because people are only going to play it for, like, a short period of time um and i think beyond that yeah then like once you've got that demo ready i think it's great to get into get into showcasing and it will give you like a ton of feedback that then you'll be able to take into the rest of the game um yeah and in general it will just be a really good experience i think yeah yeah that's yeah fine. i think um i think if people are like looking into getting into a like a showcasing event um my number one thing would be just apply uh yeah. like i think there are so many people they kind of they think too much uh, about about what could go wrong with it whereas mm -hmm. actually you'd probably be very surprised that there are a lot of positives um when it when it comes to it and it's a really good experience uh, as a developer like you really really it makes it get a different real. perspective it makes it feel yeah real. like you're doing it uh oh it reminds yeah, me of exactly it, is get one cool bit of merch or something like, I got a mm. banner or something, and, like, it doesn't have to be the prettiest thing, but if it's big and catchy and colourful, that's really what you want. Like, you want something that on the day will draw people, and that will give you, hopefully, a lot more confidence as well because you'll have people, like, eyeing it and coming over. I think, yeah, definitely nice. That's probably, like, one thing worth investing in. Um, yeah. Make the controls really obvious, like, on a piece of paper. <laughs> yes. Make the controls yeah. super obvious because... You don't want to have to manually talk someone through the controls because that's that's like the least fun thing to do ever. So have that really yeah. pasted somewhere, big bold. These are the controls of my game because it will save you so so many conversations. Um, definitely. Yeah. No. Hundred percent. And I think um, you know when people are playing, uh, just be open to the fact that some people aren't going to want to talk to you at all. They are going to be glued to their screen and not even acknowledge that you're there. Um, and just watch them, just see what they're doing, because sometimes that is actually some of the best like feedback to take on, even though it's non-verbal, you can tell from their emotions and tell from 
how they're playing, if they're enjoying themselves. Because um, people enjoy the games differently. Uh, and it's really important that we're, you know, we're open to that. We're not, like, closing our minds to, to how different people play. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think I think that about rounds off, like, everything that we really needed to talk about. I think we really, really captured a lot of, of what goes into showcasing. Um, and I, I quite liked... You know the the elements we were going into when it, you know, when we were talking about the audiences, especially you know for children and stuff. I think that's a really interesting um, talking point. I, I, you know, I haven't haven't really thought about it in a great detail, but it's definitely something that you that I realised that kids yeah, yeah, sure. are just like some of the best uh, for yeah. <laughs> for playtesting. There'll be a massive target audience regardless of the game you you release, like pretty much. So yeah definitely worth finding different expos that showcase it to different people is like a great idea um, yeah yeah no, exactly yeah i think i did uh, well, uh, oh yeah i was just gonna yeah i did uh, about four expos i think in total before the final release so yeah in terms of numbers that uh, <laughs> and i know you're you're uh, many many expos through <laughs> i think we've done about eight or nine now with this game yeah um but yeah no um Thanks very much, Danny, for coming on to Game Dev London today. Um, and thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, please make sure you like, follow, subscribe on whatever platform you're listening from. Um, if you'd like to learn more about GDL, visit gamedev.london, or you can join our Discord community at gamedev.london slash join. Uh, and, yeah, we'll see you next week. Uh, and thank you so much for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye.